Welcome to another episode of Ask Professor V. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the five biggest lies students tell themselves about math. Lies that keep you stuck, frustrated, and feeling like you're not improving. If you've ever said these out loud or thought them to yourselves, we're gonna address them and put an end to it right here, right now. So stay tuned. Lie number one, I understand the concepts. I just don't do well on any of the quizzes or exams. I hate to break it to you, but that means you don't truly understand the concepts. What you might have is a surface level understanding and familiarity, but in a high pressure situation, like an assessment, all of the gaps in your knowledge come forward. And if you're not able to synthesize and put together all of the concepts that you've been taught, you may not recognize the pattern or what's being asked of you. And that's why you're not able to do well. And think about it, when you're calmly doing your homework, if you make a silly mistake, it's probably not the end of the world. You're able to correct it, check outside sources, go back and fix things. But you can't do that when you're in an exam. Maybe small algebra rules that you miss or a derivative that you forget suddenly makes the problem crumble. You might not even understand what the directions are asking because you never mastered the vocabulary behind what's going on. So be real with yourself. You may have a surface level understanding of the concept or maybe even like a medium level understanding. But if you're not getting the scores that you want on your exams, that means you really need to delve deeper and get serious about your studying. If I struggle, it means I'm bad at math. That's simply not true. It depends on what type of struggle we're talking about. There's a difference between productive struggle and chaotic struggle. And actually productive struggle is one of the most important elements to learning mathematical concepts solidly. When you go through the process of kind of grappling with a new idea and then finally have that aha moment, it will sit with you so much more deeply than if somebody told you that same exact information. I try to make my students go through this in class by giving them classwork problems to do every time we learn a new topic. So don't feel as if understanding math means understanding everything instantly. I promise you, even though maybe other classmates aren't expressing the fact that they're confused, they are. It's a very normal part of the process. And the farther you go in your math journey, the more often you're going to be confused. It's okay to sit through lecture and not understand every little detail that the professor went over. You're going to have to go home, review things, review the textbook, let it sit with you, let it marinate, like I like to say. And then after practicing and really delving through the material, you'll start to get that understanding. But the struggle is a normal part of the process. I don't need to study every day. I'll just study the night before the exam and pull an all-nighter. Can I tell you how many times that just leads to disaster? I see so many of my students come in bleary-eyed, sleep-deprived, over-caffeinated, and it just is a recipe for disaster. The best way to study for math is by studying a little bit every single day. And then you don't have this massive overhaul to do right before an exam. You wanna make sure you have a calm state of mind, that you're well nourished, that way you can perform well in what is a high pressure situation. So don't do the common college mistake of staying up all night or cramming even just a couple days before. It's not gonna lead to long-term retention and you won't perform as well as you possibly could. If you think about all the hours that you spend cramming, but instead you just break them up into little bits, It'll make for a much more successful semester. Lie number four, I'll go to my professor's office hours when I'm confused. You need to go to office hours even if you don't feel like you're confused. You should start going to office hours at the very beginning of the semester. Think of it this way, office hours is not the ER, okay? You don't go there for a Hail Mary right before an exam when things are going bad and the plane is already crashing. You need to be proactive. Go to office hours and think of it as preventative care. You're trying to stay on top of the material. And worst case scenario, you're overprepared and you get an A without that much effort on the first exam. Wouldn't that be a wonderful situation? Lie number five, I'm just not a math person. I hate to break it to you, but there is no math gene. And you might say, Professor V, that's easy for you to say. Your mother is also a math professor. But you have to think about what that meant for me. That meant not that I was automatically good at math, but that I grew up in a home where math was not demonized. If I was confused, I constantly had access to a resource that could help me. And I also had a love of the subject instilled in me from an early age. So that can be developed no matter your circumstance. It's not something that you're inherently born with. Don't feel that just because you don't automatically get it, you're gonna forever be bad at math. What math requires is lots and lots of 
perfect practice. And I say perfect practice because there's no point to repeating or practicing solving math problems incorrectly. So the number one thing you need to do is make sure that you're successfully practicing all of the concepts that you're learning to reinforce them so that it becomes fluent, like muscle memory. Now, here's the thing you have to keep in mind. There are some people who these ideas will just naturally come to more easily. You may need to practice a certain problem or a certain concept a hundred times, whereas your friend may only need 25 rounds and then it's in. That's okay. Everyone's not the same and life isn't fair, but Math is not something that's out of your reach. If you are disciplined enough, you can put in the time and the repetition to master whatever is necessary. Now, if you recognize that you've told yourself some of these lies, don't panic. These are things that you can stop and fix now. Be sure to tune in for next week, another episode of Ask Professor V, where I'll give you more studying and life advice, as well as tips on how to better prepare and succeed in your math courses. Also make sure you check out my full length video lectures organized by course and playlist on my YouTube channel. I have everything from trig, pre-calc through calculus three, differential equations, and so much more. Thank you guys so much for your support. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.